I'd have to say that this is probably one of the most important trainings and teachings from scripture you're probably ever going to receive. It's going to be up there either at the top or right up there with the top. We're going to go in. We're going to identify who is Yahusha. Was there a difference between Yahusha before he came to the world, while he was in the world, and after he departed the world? Is there a difference? Are you ready? Let's go in. So the purpose of this training session today is to really identify and remove all the confusion about exactly who is Yahusha. So many people really are viewing the Savior through the eyes, through the lenses of pastors, scholars, re organized religion, family, traditions. And what do Yahusha argue with the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the religious rulers about? What did he argue with them about the most? He said, you set aside my com the commandments of my father in order to uphold the traditions of men. So today we're going to smash, I mean, we're going to annihilate some incredible myths, some incredible traditions that's held a lot of people back from really experiencing the true power of the most high, all what Yahusha came to this earth to do, you gotta understand who he is in order to tap into his power. So what I've done, because this is such a critical message and training, is I put together a slideshow because I want you to understand from scripture, not from my viewpoint, but directly from scripture, about who is Yahuwah and who is Yahusha in comparison to Yahuwah. It's very important because once you understand that, you're going to be able to tap into the true power like you've never experienced before. This is a breakthrough message. So let's get started with our slideshow. And right off the gate, right off the top, what are we saying? Yahusha is Yahuwah. And I want you to really embrace this message and reserve all prior thoughts you might have had, you might have had about who Yahusha is. Because I'm going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt to where there is no debate that Yahusha is Yahuwah. It can't be any other way. We're going to be debunking all the confusion. We're going to debunk the confusion. And what are we going to do it from? What are we going to do it from? We're going to do it straight from scripture. Let's dive right into Yeshayahu, sign name Isaiah 43, 10 through 12. And this is taken from the true scriptures translation. As you know, we are translating what we believe to be the most accurate English translation in the world. So we jumped ahead in multiple places and did those translations ahead of time, even though we've got a, a path and a method that we're progressing through from the beginning of scriptures all the way to the end. Well, we wanted to jump ahead because this message is so critical. So when we get into Yeshayahu, who's wrongfully called Isaiah 43, 10 through 12, let's see what Yahuwah says immediately. He says in verse 10, you are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah, and you are my servant whom I have chosen. So he's talking directly now to Yeshayahu, the most quoted prophet of all time. He says, you are my servant who I have chosen so that you know and believe me and understand that I am he. You hear a lot of people talking about he is him or the one, the, the one that is the best today. They say it a lot in the sporting world, right? Well, from the scriptures, what's happening now is Yahuwah is saying, I am he. I am the one. He says, before me, there was no other all form, all meaning mighty one, right? Allahim is mighty ones. Some people say God incorrectly, but he's saying before me, there was no other mighty one form, no other all form. Now, this is important what he says here, nor will there be any other all formed after me, not one. He's emphatic. He's saying before me, there was no all formed. 
and there won't be one coming later. Uh oh. This is important, especially what he says in verse 11. I, he's emphatic because he says I twice. I, I am Yahuwah. And besides me, there is no savior. Oh, whoa. What are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with Yeshayahu, chapter 43, verse 11, when the Most High Yahuwah says, I, I am Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no Savior. So now we're in a predicament because we've been taught there's some other Savior. Yes or no? True or false? Absolutely. The world has been consistently taught that there's another savior besides Yahuwah, but yet we've got Yahuwah himself saying, I, I am Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no savior. I, he's the emphatic again, he says, I twice in verse 12. I, I have declared and saved. I have made known what is known and not some foreign mighty one, one among you, not some fake image that you've created. He, what he's saying here, let's debunk all the confusion. He says, and you are my witnesses, declares Yahuwah, that I am all. So he's wanting us to be his witnesses that he's the only mighty one. Let's keep going. Scripture is emphatic about proving itself. Scripture just lays it down, lays it down, lays it down. So he says again, in Yeshayahu, sign name Isaiah 45, 5 through 8, verse 5, I am Yahuwah, and there is no one else. There is no other Allahim besides me. I strengthen you. Even though you have not known me, you see, when you have a heart for him, he's going to strengthen you even when you do not know him, but you got to listen to his words specifically. He says, there is no one else. There is no other Allahim besides me. So what are people teaching? They're teaching that Yahusha is another Allahim. You see the predicament we can run into when we're faced with the scriptures and we have to make a decision. Verse six, so that they know from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun that there is no one but me. I am Yahuwah and there is no one else. How much more emphatic can Yahuwah be here? He said there was none before him, nor will there be after him. And now he's reiterating in these verses in Yeshayahu 45, 5 through 8, that there's no one else. He says in verse 7, forming light, he forms the light and creating darkness, making peace and creating disaster. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. Rain down, O heavens, from above and let clouds pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up for what? Salvation. He's connecting himself to being the savior in order to bear fruit and let righteousness spring up with it. I, Yahuwah, have created it. Have created what? Everything there is, including salvation. Keep going. The scriptures are very, very emphatic about this. Debarim, sign name Deuteronomy, chapter six, verses four through nine. Put your seatbelts on. Hear, O Yisrael. This is, they, they've come out. He's brought them out of Matsri, out of Egypt, out of misery, right? And now Masha, son named Moses, is telling the people specifically, here's how you got to deal with Yahuwah. Hear, O Yisrael, the people of Yahuwah. Yahuwah is our Lua. Yahuwah is one. He didn't say Yahuwah is two, three, four, five different entities. He didn't mention anything about any trinity or anything like that. He said that Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Lua, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. 
everything you got. You got to love Yahuwah like that. That's why this message is a test for you. Verse six, and these words which I am commanding to you today must always be in your heart and you shall impress them upon your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you go outside and when you go to sleep and when you wake up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. What's the purpose here? Masha saying, everywhere you go, coming, going, waking up, going to sleep, it doesn't matter where you're at. Yahuwah is one, and there is nobody else but him. And you got to know that and know that and teach that and teach that to our children. That's why so many people are so confused because they haven't done the bar six, four through nine. They haven't loved Yahuwah with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their what? Mind and all their strength, everything they've got. Most people don't love Yahuwah like that. But guess what? It promotes the truth. We love Yahuwah like that. The people that are hearing this message, they love Yahuwah like that that want to go ahead and take it to the next level with Yahuwah. Let's keep going because we're in the scriptures. We're not in our opinions. We're not in our suggestions. We are in the scriptures, right? Maliki Yahu, Sane Malachi. You know what that means, by the way? The messenger is Yahuwah. The message is Yahuwah. The message is Yahuwah. Chapter three, verse six. Verse six says, I am Yahuwah. I do not change. So you, the descendants of Yahakah, which is all of us, are not destroyed. Oh, yeah. Yahuwah is saying that he doesn't change. So when he says that he is one, when he says there is no other savior, he's saying I do not change. So you got to make a decision today. And anybody listening to this, we all have to make a decision. Did he change or did he not change? Does he change or does he not change? The scripture says he doesn't change. I choose to believe the scriptures. What do you choose? Because the scriptures are clear about this. Keep moving. And Yahu Hanan, sign named John. Let's keep rock. Let's let's get in the trenches here. This is such a critical message because Yahusha himself is now going to tell you who he is and who the father is and his relationship. He's going to tell you precisely. And we know how serious this is because this is from chapter 17, right before they're about to capture him to go kill him. So he's praying to Yahuwah, the father, watch this, he's praying to the father part of him. And what is he praying? Verse five in chapter 17, Yahuwah, and now esteem me with yourself, father, with the esteem which I had with you before the world came into existence. Remember Yahuwah said before me, there was no other. Now here's Yahusha saying, I want you to esteem me, right? With the esteem that I had with you before the world was ever created. Now watch what he says in verse six. I have revealed your name to the men whom you've given me from this world. Now what did he say? He revealed his what? I have revealed your name, Father. What's the name of the Father? Yahuwah, right? They were yours and you gave them to me and they have guarded your word. Challenge, are you gonna guard his word? Because look what he says in verse 11. And you can go read the whole chapter. I'm giving you the very specifics that deal with the subject. Verse 11, and I am no longer going to be in this world but they will be in this world. And now, and I now come to you, set apart father. Get your thoughts ready here. Cause he says, guard them in your name, which is the name you have given me. 
so that they might be one as we are one. What did Masha say? Yahuwah is one. Now we've got Yahusha saying, before the world came in existence, this is who I am. He's saying right now, I am one with the Father, and the Father's name is my name. And the word Yahusha is really a sentence, not just a name, it's a description of who he is. Yahusha means Yahuwah is salvation. So he's saying, this name, the name above all names, is the name you gave me, verse 20. And I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's us. We're believing these words have got passed down from the people that did the right stand so that we have an opportunity to be connected with him. Verse 21. In order for them to be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, so that they too might be in us. You and I, we can't participate with Yahuwah unless we accept him for who he is. Yahusha is Yahuwah. He's proven it. So that the world might believe that you have sent me. Verse 22. And the esteem which you gave me, I have given them so that they might be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me so that they might be perfected. And now he takes it to another level. See, this is a perfected type of thought, perfected into one. When you understand who Yahushua is and that he is Yahuwah and there can't be any other way, otherwise Yahuwah will be a liar. Yahuwah said there is no other savior but him. So Yahusha is playing a role of the son walking on the earth for what reason? So that we might be perfected into one in them. So finish verse 23, right? I am, I am in them, verse 23. You are in me so that they might be perfected into one so that the world knows that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Do you want to participate in this kind of love with Yahuwah? This is the highest level of love, to know who he is. This is eternal life, right? That they may know you. That would be just a few verses back in verse three, that they may know you, the one and only true Allah, that's, that's, that's to know him, is to, is to know who he is. And who he is, is his name. The person, the Pasham person, is Hashem, the name. The person is their name. Let's keep going. Scripture is very clear on this. What are we going to do with Yahuwah and John chapter 5, verse 43? When Yahusha says, I have come in my father's name. But you do not receive me. If another comes in a name not from my father, you will receive him. He says he came in his father's name because of his father's name, and he is his father's name. Woo! This is off the charts. The scriptures are so clear. Now we keep going to the scriptures. Yahuwah, John. Chapter 10, verses 25 through 31. This is so clear. It's beyond doubt. Verse 25. Who does Yahusha say he is? Yahusha answered them. I have told you and you do not believe me. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness as to who I am. So these next slides I'm going to give you, they are so crystal clear. Yahushua is going to tell you who he is. He says, the works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness as to who I am. But you do not believe me because you are not my sheep. As I have said to you, my sheep hear my voice. Are you hearing his voice today? And I know them and they follow me. You're going to follow him today. That's the question. 28, 
and I give them everlasting life and they will never perish. And no one can snatch them out of my hand. No one. Verse 29, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Now what? And I and my father are ahad. Hebrew word ahad means one. So right there, look what they did in verse 31 when he said in verse 30, I and my father are ahad. We're one. Then again, the Yahudim, the Pharisees, picked up stones to stone him. You see, when he told them that he is Yahuwah, we have to understand that Yahuwah is way more than we could ever imagine. He's omnipresent. He's, he's everywhere. He can be anything and still be one. He can come in multiple personalities and still be one. We know that this is serious because those religious rulers who knew the scripture, they knew what he was saying. That's why they picked those stones up. Keep going. Now, what are you going to do? What are we going to do with Yahuhanan, John chapter 14, 3 through 10? I told you that these words, as I progress through these next slides, it's so obvious who Yahushi is. It's it's you it's you indisputable. You can't argue it because in chapter fourteen, verse three, what does he say? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I shall return again to join my to join you with myself. And then he says something really emphatic, so that you so that where I am, you will be too. And you know where I am, I am going and the way to get there. So then he gives a assumptive statement to his disciples, right? He says, hey, you know, look what he says there in verse four. You know where I am going and the way to get there. And what does Thomas say? Thomas, sign name Thomas say. Thomas said to him, master, we do not know where you are going. So how are we able to know the way? You see, look what their response is. Like, why are you telling us that we know when we are sitting here telling we don't know? And what did Yahusha say to him? Yahusha said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know who I am, then you know my Father too. Powerful. From now on, this is what no one can argue with here, or else you're going to be arguing with the, with the Savior of all, the Father, the Creator, this next part. He goes, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. What? Yahushua says that from now on, those that were sitting there with him, he says, you know the Father, Yahuwah, and you have seen them. If you looked at me, you know who Yahuwah is. That's the way, the truth, and the life. Can't argue it. And still and yet, the disciples didn't pick it up. Like, are you picking it up now? Are you sitting there going, oh, maybe you're going to step up like Philip, Philip, son named Philip, right? Philip said to him in verse 8, Master. Just show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Didn't Yahushua just say it in the previous verse that they've seen the Father? But what is what does Yahushua come back and reiterate in verse 9? Yahushua said to him, I have been with you so long, and you do not know me, Bila. Anyone who has seen, anyone who has seen me. Anyone who has seen me, I'm going to repeat that again. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Case closed. Even though I'm going to give you some additional documentation. But this case is closed right now. As to who Yahushua is. Because Yahushua said, 
anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? He goes, what are you talking about? Like, y'all, who's just looking at them like, are y'all crazy? You done been with me all this time. You can't see that eternal life is staring at you every day. You can't see that the creator of all is staring at you every day. I am Yahuwah. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I am Yahuwah. Who can debate that? So when I see all this confusion, all these people getting upset, and they're talking about all these other theories, listen, we got to take Yahuwah at his word. And his son, when he walked on this earth, was performing a task as the son. But that son is Yahuwah because he told us that he has who he is. Do you not believe that I am in the father and that the father is in me? This is the issue that we as humans have not been able to reconcile for the most part because we're dealing in flesh. And he says that you must worship him in spirit and the spirit is so versatile. It's almost incomprehensible. He goes on and says, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own, but it is the father who lives in me doing his work. And see, the ones who get confused about this, he's just not his sheep. If you question this and go, no, no, how can that be? You're not his sheep. His sheep go, oh, I get it. Just like the disciples, they sit back and go, oh, now I get it. Okay, I get it. You can be whatever you want to be, Yahuwah. Let's, let's let scripture continue to validate. What are we going to do with Yahuhanan, John chapter 1, verse 1? That people say over and over and over and over. And yet, if you say to them that Yahusha is Yahuwah, they'll turn around and go, no, 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 that's that, they're separate. But let's look in chapter one of Yahuhanan, verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Alua, and the word was Alua. The word was the, the word was with the mighty one, and the word is the mighty one. What are you going to do with that? Either he is or he isn't. Who's the word? We all know that the word is Yahushua when he worked, walked on the earth. Listen, take a deep breath and understand that he's not here in that form anymore. See, that should help a lot of people. Yahushua in his earthly form. Yahuwah wanted to feel exactly what we feel like as human beings. So he came down as the sun to feel everything we feel, to experience everything, to have the complete understanding, but he couldn't leave his majestic capacity as a whole. He couldn't just say, I'm gonna leave in that. The universe is upheld by that power. So he diversified himself, it's obvious, because the scripture is telling us this, by being the word, and the word was with Alua, and the word was Alua. So why did the Pharisees want to kill Yahushua when he was walking around in this earthly form? Why did they want to kill Yahushua? What's Yahushua mean? Yahuwah is salvation. Blasphemy. They wanted to kill him because of blasphemy. And most people have no clue what blasphemy is. They'll think it's saying GD, right? Like, goddamn. And you go, oh, you can't say that. And I'm like, you should really say that because you want God to be damned. Because God is a pagan word. So, yeah, to hell with that word. But that's not blasphemy. Blasphemy is the following. According to the Pharisees, according to the religious rulers, they consider blasphemy as to speaking Yahuwah's name. No one was allowed to say Yahuwah's name other than the high priest in the temple. That was it. And especially blasphemy is if you were claiming to be Yahuwah. So why did they kill Yahusha? 
Yahoo Hanan. John chapter 8, verses 48 through 59. Let's go. The Yahudim answered and said to him, didn't we say that you are a Shumarani and are possessed by a demon? So Shumarani is Samaritan. For those of you that don't know that, that conversion there, Shumarani is Samaritans. So they didn't like them. They said, didn't we say all along that you were this outsider, that you're possessed by a demon, verse 49. Yahusha answered, I do not have a demon, but I value my father, and you do not value me. Verse 50, I do not speak my own esteem, but there is one who does seek it, and he is judging. 51, truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone guards my word, they shall never see death at all. 52, the Yahudim said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham and the prophets died. And you say, if anyone guards my word, he shall never taste death at all. Are you greater than our father Abraham and the prophets who died? Who do you think you are? Yahushua answered them. If I esteem myself, my esteem is nothing at all. It is my father who you claim is your allure who esteems me. See, this is Yahusha teaching edification, something that we all need to learn from. If you come speaking on your own behalf, you don't have that power that you do as if you're speaking on someone, somebody else speaking and, and, and promoting you. See, that's the power. He's teaching us edification right here. Verse 55. And you do not know him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I guard his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. And he saw it and rejoiced. I'm going to say that again. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day and he saw it. And rejoice. So now he's claiming that Abraham saw him. What are we going to do with that? Yahusha is claiming that Abraham saw him and rejoice. Can we prove that by scripture? I'm about to in a second. 57. The Yahudim then said to him, you are not even 50 years old yet. And you are saying you have seen Abraham? Yahushua said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. I am. Oh, whoa. Yahushua said, before Abraham came to be, I am. I am. That's like off the charts. Because now he's specifically claiming to be Yahuwah right there. Because Yahuwah is the one that told Masha, Aya, Asha, Aya, I am that I am. What they do in response to him saying that, verse 59, at that point, they picked up stones to stone him. But Yahusha hid himself. He hid himself, slipping away from the set apart place, aka the temple, going through the crowd and passing by them. Look at that. Barashit 18, 1 through 3. Did Abraham see Yahusha, who is Yahuwah? As the scriptures just said, it's in Barashit, sign name Genesis 18, 1 through 3. And Yahuwah appeared to who? Abraham, by the oak tree of Mamre, as he sat at the tent door during the heat of the day. When he looked up, Abraham, he saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran out. He was rejoicing. He ran out from the tent door to greet them. And he bowed down to the ground. He was so excited. And what did he say? And he said, my Yahuwah. <laughs> See, Yahushua saying, I done seen him. I done met Abraham. How can we argue with that? My Yahuwah, if I have found favor in your eyes, 
do not leave your servant, I beg of you. And if you read all of Barashit 18, Genesis 18, you're going to see that he wanted to get him some water, wanted to fix him some food. It was very exciting to be there with him. And that's when Yahuwah even told him, Shari, Sarah, his wife going to have a kid this time next year. And she giggled. And Yahuwah said, what's she doing laughing? See, all that's in that story. But we now have proven that Yahusha is Yahuwah. And as he told the Pharisees, he told them that I've already seen Abraham. And he rejoiced when he met me. Proof right there. Shamu, Exodus 3, 13 through 15. And Masha said to Alua when he's on the mountain. See, we're tying it together. What Yahusha, when he was in his human flesh form, is saying to the Pharisees, we are tying all the scriptures together to prove that Yahusha is Yahuwah. We go back to Masha being on the mount. We're going to deal with the ayah word that he said to the Pharisees. And Masha said to Alua, when I go to the children of Israel and say to them, the Alua of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And Alua said to Masha, what? Ayah? That same thing that Yahushua said to the Pharisees. The first thing he responded was, Ayah. Asher Ayah. I am that which I am. And he said, this is what you shall say to the children of Israel. I am Ayah has sent me to you. And Alua further said, so many people get tied up and go, well, his name is I am. No, he kept talking. Let him keep talking. I am means I'm establishing. Aya means I'm always. I've always been. I always will be. I'm identifying that I'm that powerful. So I'm giving you a description of my majesty. And now I'm going to give myself the name. I'm going to tell you the name that I have given myself that you are to take. He says it in verse 15. You don't go that far afterwards. When people get hung up on just Aya and they don't keep rolling to figure out who Aya is, that means they don't want to deal with scripture. In verse 15, and Alua further said to Masha, thus you shall say to the children of Yisrael, Yahuwah, he's identified his name, the Alua of your fathers, the Alua of Abraham, the Alua of Yitshak, and the Alua of Yaakov, Jacob, right? has sent me to you. This is my name, Yahuwah. This is my name, and my name is my memorial to all generations. So now we've proven that Yahusha is Yahuwah because he, he said it to the Pharisees, and they wanted to kill him because they considered it blasphemy. So the question is, salvation is found in what name? Because people are confused. Well, do I pray in Yahusha's name or Yahuwah's name? Which do I pray? Well, let's see what the scriptures say. You all, sign name Joel, 232. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of who? Yahuwah shall be saved. Simple. Mahashim, Acts 221 is a direct quote of you all, 232. Mahashim 221 says, when Kappa came out of the upper room, Peter, when the spirit had fell on them, what did he say in order to get salvation? And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Ramayim, Romans 10, 12 through 13. You know why I love these two verses so much? Because the, the apostle that is used most to mislead people is Brother Shaul, Paul. People will even call Paul a false prophet because they don't understand him, like Papa said. He says, if you don't pay close attention, he can, you can be misled. And they don't understand the fact that Shaul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees before. So he knew the law inside and out, upside and down. He was you know, like an attorney. So it was hard for people to understand him sometimes. But he wasn't a false prophet. Kappa said that. And he proves it by Ramayim. Romans 10, 12 through 13. What does Shaul say? Because there is no distinction between Yahudi, Jew, and Yahuni, Greek, or Gentile. For the same master of all is rich to all those calling upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. 
Shaul, Paul said, Yahuwah is the name. Mahashi 412. And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by whom we must and we need to be saved. Look at this. Yeshua Yahoo. Remind, this is a reminder. Yeshua Yahoo 4311. We read it earlier. I, I am Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no Savior. The Savior, this might be controversial, but it's the truth. The Savior, Yahusha, as the man that walked on the earth is no longer here. And salvation is not found in the name of Yahusha. Salvation is only found in the name of Yahuwah because that's who he is. And that's the only name. There's only one name, it says, given among men by whom we must be saved. And that is Yahuwah. Crystal clear. Scriptures have proved it. Hazum 14.1. Revelation. Hazum Revelation 14.1. And I looked and I saw a lamb standing on Mount Zion, Zion. And with him, 144,000. Would you like to be one of them? Well, if you want to be one of them, having his and his father's name written upon their foreheads. One name. One name. Yahuwah proves it again in Hazun, Revelation 22, 1 through 4. And he showed me a river of the water of life, clear as a crystal, coming from the throne of Alua and of the Lamb. See, it's talking about those two there, right? But watch how Yahuhanan, John, who wrote Revelation, Hazun, watch how he brings it home. He says, the throne of Alua, verse 1, and of the Lamb. Those, those two, right? In the middle of its street and on each side of the river was the tree of life, which produces 12 fruits. And each tree yielded its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. <clears throat> Pay attention, fam. And no longer shall there be any curse. And the throne of Alua and the lamb, those two, will be in it. Now watch what happens. And his servants won. And his servants will serve him. Watch this. Verse four solidifies this one. Yahuwah. And they shall see his face, not their face. It is they who will see their faces. It says, and they shall see his face. And what does it say? And his name will be on their foreheads. Proof. Positive. There's only one. And Yahuwah knew precisely what he was going to do. And he told us through the scriptures exactly what he was going to do, how he's going to do it. He precisely told us that he is coming down from on high to live as a man and to be called Yahusha. Can you believe that? Sir, I don't hardly know anybody that's bringing that message to the world, but it's right in front of our faces in the scriptures. He spoke to the prophet, the most quoted prophet of all time is Yeshayahu, Isaiah. He, he told him precisely in Yeshayahu 714. I got it right here on the screen. And then he confirmed it through the messengers talking to Miriam and Yusuf. He told them through the messengers, when you go to name who I'm sending, me, you're going to name me Yahusha. I'm about to play a role as my son. And we know it's him playing a role as his son because he called himself a specific word, Emmanuel. Let's go in and look and see. In Yeshua Yahu 7.14, Isaiah 7.14, therefore Yahuwah himself, you notice? He didn't say he was sending somebody else. He says, therefore Yahuwah himself will give you a sign. He is the sign. The Alma, meaning a young woman, shall conceive and give birth to a son. 
and shall call his name Emmanuel. Sign name Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? It's simple. It's in the scriptures. Let's go to the next scripture verses so we can get clarity on what does Emmanuel mean. And what did Yahuwah say to call the son? Matit Yahu, Matthew 1, 21 through 23. Started in 21. And she shall give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yahusha. There it is. Because he shall save his people from their sins. I put in brackets, Yahusha equals Yahuwah is salvation. Why is this important? And why do you got to rip off all the old baggage of thought process that has you thinking there's two saviors when Yahuwah specifically said, there is no other savior but me. So if here he is talking through the messenger and saying that you shall call his name Yahusha because he shall save his people from their sins. Is there somebody else other than Yahuwah that can save people from sins? Heard the scriptures. No, he's already proven it. He says, before me, there was no other. After me, there will be no other. So we know precisely right here in the scriptures, in these scripture verses, what he's talking about. We just got to slow it down. We got to come together and reason a little here, a little there. Let's keep going. Because it's going to get very, very clear in verses 22 and 23. And all this came to be in order to fulfill what was spoken by who? By Yahuwah through the prophet Yeshayahu saying in verse 23, he's now going to quote Yeshayahu Isaiah 7, 14 in Matit Yahu 1, 23. They're getting ready to quote, but he's going to add to the quote. He's going to clarify it so there's no mistake about what exactly he means. See, an Alma, meaning a young woman, shall conceive and give birth to a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then he goes on to clarify, which means Alua lives with us. There you have it. Yahuwah himself living with us. That's another reason we celebrate Feast of Tabernacles, Saku. Why? Because he tabernacled with them. You see, this is not the first time that Yahuwah has come down to live among us. It's not the first time. See, like with the with Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, he tabernacled with them. He lived among them. But this is the first time he's ever done it this way, where he came down feeling complete as a man. Well, we know he came down in the vision, in the persona of a man, because he talked to Abraham. So we know this is something that he does. But he says, this time, he's going to come as the Savior. Woo! This time, I'm coming, Yahuwah says, I'm coming as the Savior. I'm going to give you some instructions. You're going to call me Yahusha so that it's identified. We couldn't call him Yahuwah here because he understood the those times that that was considered blasphemy. He couldn't have got to go fulfill out what he needed to do. And plus, he needed to be able to feel all that we feel. Those 33-some years, that's what gave him the complete understanding of what we feel. He understands us more than you could ever imagine. So that when we approach him and we say, oh, but I'm just a human, he's going to say, ah, I was human too. Isn't that off the hook? There's nothing that you feel that I haven't felt. Yahuwah will be able to look us right in our eyes and say it. And he says, I went through it. If I went through it, you can go through it. Those who love him must walk as he walked. See? Because we've got to come to grips with who is he? Yahusha is Yahuwah. Yahusha is Alua who lived with us. And now, because he went through that process and has been risen 
from the dead after they killed him for claiming that he was Yahuwah. That's why they killed him, right? But now he's been given the name above all names, restored back to himself in his rightful position as the father and will return with that one name, Yahuwah. So we got to do something important here. We got to do a recap of the critical scriptures so that you don't forget because we've covered a lot and it's heavy and it's potent and it's true. And there's no way around it. We all know it sitting here together. We know it. And especially when we start out with the recap of Yeshua Yahoo 4311, Isaiah 4311, when Yahuwah says, I, I am Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no savior. We got to smash this two savior concept. We got to smash it. We got to smash that Yahuwah is something different. And then there's his son that is the savior that's different than his role. He said he's the only savior. The father, the father said he is the only savior. And so we got, once he says that, we've now got to figure out how we work through the scriptures to position Yahusha then, because there can't be another savior if the father who is the most high says, I am the only savior. And then he lays out with the scriptures, those who have ears to hear, they're going to hear what I'm saying here. He lays it out that I came and played this role to bring you back to me. Isn't he off the charts? Isn't Yahuwah magnificent that he can be who he wants to be? If he wants to be 50 people, he can be it. If he wants to present roles, there's a hundred different roles. He can do that. Because he is Yahuwah. Haya. He says, I am. I can be whatever I want to be. You see Yahoo. 45.5 is the second recap we need to look at. I am Yahuwah, and there is no one else. There is no Allahim besides me. So you don't have two Allahim. You don't have Yahuwah and Yahusha as two Allahim. It's only one, and that's Yahuwah. Debarim, Dut. Deuteronomy 6 4. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah our Allah, Yahuwah is our Allah, and Yahuwah is one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Yahuwah is one. Matit Yahu. Matthew 1 23, which we just covered. See, an Alma, meaning a young woman, shall conceive and give birth to a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel, sign name, which means. Alua lives with us. He came and lived with us, but this time he did it as a man. That's what's so incredible. Yahuhanan, John 17, 11, And I am no longer going to be in this world. Hey, fam, Yahusha is telling us, I'm not going to be in this world anymore. Stop raising the image of me as a human. Look at all these people put up all these crazy crosses and stuff and try to say that's the savior, the human. Is. He's not here. And he didn't die on a cross. He died on a stake. And that was temporary to progress, to just go ahead and pay the whole price for us to feel. If they drove those stakes through your hands right now, that pain you would feel is what he felt, leaving us without excuse. He says in Yahuhanan 1711, John 1711, I am no longer going to be in this world. He's not here. Not as that, not as that physical human. But these are in this world. We are here, physical human beings. And now I come to you, set apart, Father. Guard them in your name, which is the name you have given me so that they might be one as we are one. So when Yahushua says to his disciples, are you his disciples? That's number one. Because he was speaking on the earth, two men that were following him, and he was telling them, my name is the father's name. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to keep calling him and, and, and presenting to him that he is who he is no longer? He is no longer Yahusha. He's not. I know that might be hard to understand. That might be controversial, but he's not that anymore. That was a role he had to play for a specific time. And that name was a description of who he is. Yahuwah is salvation. So he's one. 
Yahuhanan, John 10, 30. I and the Father are ahad. Ahad, that means one, period. Keep progressing. In this critical recap of scriptures, Yahuhanan, John 14, 7. If you know who I am, then you know my father too. <laughs> From now on, you do know him. See where I highlighted the word know? And have seen him. You see, I highlighted the word seen. They said, you know him and you've seen him. Was that enough for them right then? Well, it wasn't because all of a sudden, what happens? Philip, son named Philip, comes up right after that and says, Yahusha. Yeah, he, he says, he says, uh, that's when he said, can you please just show us the father and it'll be enough. And Yahusha said to him in 14.9 of Yahuhanan, he says, I have been with you so long and you do not know me, Pila? Pila? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. So how can you say, show us the father? See, at that point, Yahusha's going, this is ridiculous. You're looking through me, looking at my eyes, behind my eyeballs is eternity. Is what created all of this, including you. It's every bit of eternity, every bit of the most high was looking at him because he said it. How can we argue with Yahushua? So when people try to say all these different philosophies, and then you take them straight to these pointed scriptures, there's no way around it. So what I'm here to do as representative a representative of promote the truth is tear down those strongholds and tear off the scales. You should be seeing clearly now, clearer and clearer. And for most of you, it should be obvious. Yahuhanan 1 1. How do we get around the fact that in Yahuhanan John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. Everybody knows that the word was Yahusha, right? Was the son, the son part, right? And the word was with Alua. And the word was a lure. How do we identify how vast and how diverse Yahuwah is? I think we're going to have to see him face to face to get the whole grip. But we can't play games with this two stuff. To get every bit of this, somebody said, now, Jay, now how do you exactly know? I'm telling you right now, I'm taking him at face value and I'm not limiting the father. Yahuwah is off the charts. He's magnificent. He's majestic. He can be anything. And if he says what he's saying here, that I am, Yahushua saying, I am the father, we better believe him. We better believe him. Yahuwah and John 8.58, Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I, I am. Before Abraham came to be, I, I am. He said, I spent time with Abraham. We proved that. They were laughing and scoffing at him. But guess what? He was Yahuwah, and that's why they killed him, because he claimed to be Yahuwah. He said, I, nobody could say that and not get stoned or get impaled, what people call crucified. You couldn't do it. So we don't understand how serious that was back then. And we know to this day, those who claim to be Yahudim but are not, they still will not say that name. Those Pharisees, the people, right, over there, and, and most of those people in that land that's occupying that space called Israel, that, that, that geographical location, that's not the Yahudim of Yahuwah. There's some there, but for the most part, they are not. You want to know why? Because they deny Yahusha is Yahuwah. They deny Yahusha, period. And guess what? When you deny him, you are the anti-Mashiach. So I want you to not deny who Yahusha is ever again. You could be doing it inadvertently. A lot of times folks are confused. How, how do I pray? Now, when I end my prayer, do I end it in Yahusha's name because Yahusha paid the sacrifice or do I end it in Yahuwah's name? There is only one name. We proved it. It's Yahuwah. That's it. Point blank. Stop praying to 
the physical human being that's no longer here. Don't pray to that image anymore. You shouldn't do it. You should only pray in the name of Yahuwah. When you call out for salvation, you call on the name of Yahuwah. Specific instructions were given to you in the scriptures through this training. Follow those instructions and you'll be able to be with him. Ignore the, the instructions. And it's, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. It's hard to say. All I know is he kept it simple. All who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Right? You all, 232, Acts 221. Joel, 232, that's you all. Mahashim, Acts 221, same exact quote. All who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Ramayim, Romans 10, 13. Shaul said it, quoted the prophet. You all, all who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. There you go, you have it. So this message, I've had this in my spirit a long time. And we've talked about it here at Promote the Truth and wanted to present it at the right time. And now is that time. And when you're hearing this message, this message is for you. It's for you to repent if you haven't done so and call on the name, the only name that you can get salvation through. There is no other name given among men by whom we must be saved. Myers 10 43 says to him, to this one, all the prophets witness that through his name, there is remission and, south and, and, and forgiveness of sins. And if you look at all the prophets' names, almost every one of them is a witness to who he is. Yisha Yahu, Yisha, salvation is what? Yahuwah. It's unbelievable. So we've got these witnesses. We've got the truth. You've got the scriptures now. What are you going to do with it, fam? You're going to embrace it. You're going to get focused on the name of Yahuwah. You're going to treat it and put it at, the, at his proper place. You're going to stop having his name be brought down to nothing and violate those command, that commandment, the third commandment? No. We're going to uphold the name of Yahuwah. We're going to praise the name of Yahuwah. We're going to boast the name of Yahuwah. He is our strong tower, and he brought this message to you today. And what I want to say to you, I want to say to you the conclusion. Yahusha is Yahuwah. We've proven that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yahusha is Yahuwah, that name above all names. And I pray that this message has hit you in your soul, in your core. It's supposed to really do something to you. I had this message in my soul. I can't, I got chills running all over my body as I'm teaching it. So I know the Yahuwah, the spirit. Who is that? Yahuwah Ruah. I know he's here. Is that Yahuwah that's in us? Yes. Once we repented, called on his name, he gave us a promise to make his home with us. And these words that I say, mm -mm, I don't say them on my own accord. No, 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 no. Barak, Hava, Basham, Yahuwah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. I brought you a blessed message today in the name of who? Yahuwah. Accept it, embellish it, grow with it, and do this for yourself for the rest of your life. Promote the truth and realize that all things come through Yahuwah and know that Yahusha is Yahuwah.